So today we're in the workshop. What are we going to do? Cut some wood. I think that's what you call sap wood. Yeah, we don't want to use that. Cannot use that. Look at that. It's just like chalk. So. So that's a rubbish edge. So well, things aren't going to go perfect for the first one. No. So we may as well use the one that's less perfect. Okay. Because if it goes right first time, it'd be a miracle, wouldn't it? First time ever, wouldn't it? <laughs> so our knowledge of wood is very limited because we just accepted it, didn't we? Yeah, wood, it come from wood. a tree. Come from a tree. <laughs> we usually deal with with like, plywood, MFC. Slightly nicer plywood, which is like everything's finished surfaces. So, um, so th this is basically what we're tooled up for. So we're not really tooled up for big slabs of wood, are we? So this this is our bread and butter saw. It's big big panel saw. You can fit like eight before sheets on it, and you can cut it. But this morning I've changed the um, the blade because the ash. When, when we bought this, it came with this blade. Never used it because we've always wanted like a fine tooth for cutting nice and nice and neat. But this is like a big ripping blade, I think it's called. So give that a try. All right, there's, there's, there's the hole then. So there's the double diagonal of the hole. Okay. Yeah. And then we've got our stringer. So our stringer then is that way. So we've got a package on our... So Jen, because the the wood has got a natural curve, so we're going to cut it straight, yeah? In fact, it's not really that curve, it's right at that end. But what my intention was, so you can basically fix that on. We know this is 100mm, so I'll just cut it 100mm. 
And then use this on the guard. That was the guard. So we'll just we'll just tack this into into the. And then you're gonna be this. cutting holes in this. So only little tacks. We're gonna be cutting all this off, aren't we? Okay. It's just just on the first edge because mm -hmm. then that, that gives us a square edge. <laughs> so we've tacked this guide on. Unfortunately, all we've got is eight foot lens, which is what two point two, oh. two point four. Because so we've now measured this out to hundred mil. So if we now set the saw, we're at say one o two, hundred and two mil. Then our cut line will be like around here. But then we'll start off with a nice straight edge. Do you reckon, do you reckon it's going to work, Jim? How many fingers you got? Well, <laughs> I mean, for after we've been cutting. Ah, uh, right, okay. <laughs> Just always check, do a finger count. One, two, three. Oh, God, I can't count. Right, you know what we need to do for this? No. Nope. Get a mask on. What? Why? Is oak, does it give you like. Yeah, you don't want oak in your lungs. What does it give you? Death. <laughs> a bark. <laughs> Oh, that's prettier now. <laughs> Sorry for the lip readers. We don't want to use anything with all this sap wood in. Strong! Look at that! I'm not liking all this sawdust, it's all going down my back. No. I'm not used to this. Do you want me to give you a blow? Yeah, go on. Simon wants a blow. The only one he's getting this year. <laughs> Work up Sarah. We'll let the dust settle and we'll go and then we'll... Let the dust settle. What? <laughs> yeah, and then we'll cut them the other way and then yeah. we'll take them to go and get planed. Yay! So these are three best pieces. We've got another piece which is still screwed to the saw, but I'm going to leave it on there for now. So we're just up on an inch and a half. So we can go and plane them now. And then we'll take this to the boat, we'll try and fit these three. Um, and then if it works out okay, then we'll press this off. It's a proper tool. What's that, the percentage? What is it, 17.6%? Yeah, that's more or less an air dried sort of amount. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, dried. If you leave it. Cool, because we don't want it too dry, do we? Because we wouldn't steam. 
Or is it wet, or is it not? No. No, a wet side. No. Or eat, yeah. Okay. That's just just do a sample straight. in the middle, though. That's what I mean. I'm guessing it'd be the same throughout. Well, stamp in the middle. Yeah, go It's more accurate. We'll probably sense. break this one. Bob, what is it? What is it, Bob? Oh. Twenty points. Five, three. Oh. So that's now set to 40 mil. So now, what were they cut at, Jim? 53. 53. And what, what was our goal? 51. Oh, 50.8. 50.8. So go on then. So undo, undo this up first. Oh. Righty tighty, lefty loose, see? <laughs> what do you want? 50.8. What there? So huh? 50. I don't know. Um, yeah, because that comes with 51. So where's the point eight? Is this in tens? Um it will be, won't it? There you go, have your point eight on. No. This one at fifty point eight, you said it at fifty point six. Oh is the six a hold on how much is each one? Yeah, the last fifty one now, so it's like so. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's in twenty. So it's five centimetres. Yeah. So 10, 20, We're gonna get this long, anyway. 40, 50, 60. Yes! There you go, lock it. I'm not saying it's slow, but it's like it's labour intensive, isn't it? That's there is a fast speed, it can go through kind of twice that speed. Yeah. Obviously you finish it better with slower, but so there's a special tool you can buy for roving, but we can't seem to get hold of one at the moment. Um so we're gonna make our own uh, bread light. So here's our copper nail. So we need something to basically slip over slip over the nail to push the rove on. So I'm thinking like a big bolt, got a bit of mass to it. So if we cut the thread off, then we can use it there. Still not getting the hang of this camera lock, am I? Yeah. But then we can use it to like tap over it. That's the plan. So we're going to be boring a hole 
down this bowl. It's an M16. Is it a 16 now? Yeah, it's a 16. So what's that in inches? 5 eighths. 5 eighths bowl. Big normal bowl. So we're going to be pushing a an 8 mil drill bit into it. Good in slow mo. So we now drill the hole all the way through. Let me try and line it up. There you go. I could see you. So we've got the hole all the way through. So our copper nail just can then slip over. I need one for a different size because this one's a bit of a um, you know, like an aerosol can rattles around a bit. So I want to go drill this one on the load. So I'm now making a simulation hole. So as you can see here. This is our double diagonal planks. I've only screwed these together because I didn't want to waste the ropes. Um, so there's our frames coming down. Then we've got our stringers. And then the web frame then goes over the outside of that. So this is what the, the knees are attached to and the, the deck beams are attached to this one. But these are only like, I think, every three. So I'm going to attempt to assemble this. Look, looking at this construction now, you can tell why it's a strong boat. It's a little copper row. It's like a, a penny, to be honest with you. I wonder if pennies are cheaper. So now we're going to use our pre-made row of coal. Look at that. There's our first one done. So that's the frames on to the planking. So now we need the stringers on. But I might leave this for Gemma, because Gemma wants to gain some experience but I think that's going to work out quite well I don't know on the original hole behind the web frames they weren't the frames weren't attached to the hole because obviously you can't get access but then you get the big big copper fix which, which attach the web frames so beauty Done. I need to go and wash my hands and my feet.